In most modern games and older games, we deal with a lot of physics, and we see this in a lot of different things. Maybe that's just gravity. Maybe it's um, friction, people slowing down, decelerating as they're running. Even in the original Mario game, you could run as fast as you want, and as soon as you let go, he would decelerate. He wouldn't just instantly stop. There was actually a process where he would slow down. It was pretty quick, mind you, but it was even quicker if you, while you were running, say, for example, right, and then you hit left, he would actually skid, slow down a lot faster and then get running back the other way. So that's uh, these are all basic forces of, uh, of physics that we're going to deal with. Now games like Angry Birds and whatnot, they couldn't exist with these types of things. Now what we're going to do is we're going to give you kind of like a foundation of the basic forms of physics that we see, the forces that we see in our games, to make them look a little bit more smooth and clean and add a, little, uh, add a few game mechanics to our games that you may not, not otherwise have. So we're going to tackle three topics, as you can see up in the top here. We're going to tackle gravity, wind, and friction. And by association, friction is going. Friction, actually, all of these will really apply themselves to something called acceleration. Oops, two C's. Okay. So we're, our character is going to accelerate down, or they're going to accelerate left or right. So it's, they're really accelerating in either the x or the y direction, depending on what force is being applied to them. So let's do a quick little introduction of what we mean by forces. In order to better understand how forces work, uh, we're going to introduce you to an idea of something called a vector. Now, you've seen vectors in programming, and they just look like coordinates on the screen to you. You type in a vector 2D or something like that, and it's just a point on the screen. But it's really not. It's actually a point away from the origin. So if we say, um, now we know that our uh, screen runs from top left, right? Sorry, Let me just back up a little bit. Our screen runs from top left where zero is at the very top. Zero is zero. So when we type in a coordinate, let's say 100 pixels over and uh, let's say 50 pixels down, 50, oops. Let's say 100 pixels over and 50 pixels down what we're doing is we're creating a point, but we're not actually creating a point. We're actually creating a vector, a distance from the origin. So this line is its vector. So it's got two things that, that define what a vector is. A direction, Oops, direction. my own handwriting is getting to me here, and a magnitude, a size scale. Now depending on what you're doing at the time, this vector, these two values can represent different things. What we're going to be doing is we're going to use vectors to simulate um, direction and speed. Together, these come together to become a velocity. All right, so we have both a direction and a speed. So you might say, uh, my, my velocity is 50 miles per hour going north or something like that. Now, if we want to deal with vectors in basic math class or basic basic math, uh, we have to think about what we're doing. We have to think about what direction each one applies. Every vector, its its um, direction is based upon its x and y coordinates. So we can actually calculate this angle if we want. Uh, but it's really this x, which is 100, and this y, which is 50, that really represents its direction. How far it is from the origin is its magnitude. So if it was, say, 200 by 100, it would still be in the same direction, but it would actually be twice as long. So it would have a different magnitude or a different speed. So why do we care about this? Well, we can create different forces like gravity, wind, and friction upon this idea. Let's say, for example, you have a character who jumps in this direction. They have an angle of their jump, and this is the ground. So we can calculate their direction based on, or we can break their movement down into its x and y components, x and y. And this vector represents um, its, its direction of movement. So let's say it's moving at a speed of, let's say, 5 pixels per second. And let's say it's jumping at a degree of 45 degrees. Now if we do some basic math uh, using trigonometry, so ka toa we can do some math and calculate what these x and y components are. So for example, if I have the, I have the hypotenuse, I know I'm going to be using either uh, sine or cosine, depending on which one I want. 
Now the y value is the opposite for the angle, so to get the y I'm going to use sine. So that means sine of 45 is going to be equal to our y over 5. If we solve for y, we get y is equal to 5 times, oops, that was weird. y is equal to 5 times sine of 45 degrees. And uh, similarly speaking, we do the same thing for x. x is going to be equal to 5 times cos of 45 degrees. And what you're going to find out is, just because I chose good numbers here, this y value is actually going to come out to a value of 4, and this x value is going to come out to a value of 3. Um, and that's just a nice coincidence. Now, what that means is that our vector that represents our velocity has an x component of 3 and a y component of 4, and that will give us a simulation speed of 5. Now, that's all fine and dandy, but who cares? Well, what this does, this angle or this vector, we can now apply other forces. So this is our vector of movement, our speed, our velocity. Now, if I want to apply other forces, say, for example, gravity, wind, and friction, I have to think for a second, well, how do those apply to this force? Well, gravity is a force that only acts down. That means that gravity's force has a vector that goes straight down. Now, it has a certain speed to it, now, like a certain magnitude. Now, in reality, it's probably a lot smaller than this. So let's say, for example, it's like this. It's more like that little bit. That means at any given time, my velocity, my trajectory, is going to be moving. Now, if nothing acted against this, let's say I was in space, I would continue moving in this straight line forever. It would just keep flowing in this straight line forever. But we live on Earth, and Earth has different forces, one of which, of course, is gravity. So gravity gets applied to this force. And the way that we apply this gravity, I'm going to color this in a blue, is we line up our gravity vector tail to nose. So we just draw it straight down, and we draw our line. Now to get the result of these two vectors together, so what the resulting, the resulting vector is going to be, I draw a line from the tail of the first vector to the head of the second vector. And that is my true movement. That is how I'm actually going to be moving, not this original one. So as gravity gets applied, I don't actually move up as much as I originally would have. So gravity has forced me down. The next update, this would continue. So the next time, we, if we were to continue on going forever, it would just keep going, but gravity gets applied again. So if this were to keep going, we would keep going this nice straight line, but we're going to apply gravity again. So it doesn't go in this nice straight line. It actually gets applied. And you can see what's happening is eventually, gravity is going to overcome, and we're going to start moving down. That's how the forces work. We just line them up from uh, tail to nose, and we just apply each individual one. So I'm gonna back up a little bit just so we can apply a few more vectors to this. Get this. Another uh, common vector that we see is one called wind. Now this definitely applies when we're jumping, and wind, depending on which direction it's moving, may produce a different effect. So let's say we have, let's go with green for wind. Let's say we have wind moving to the right, and it, it's got a vector like this. So then wind would also be applied to our calculation. So wind, we line it up from nose to tail, and we apply it there. So you can see all these different vectors are being added. We just keep adding nose to tail, nose to tail, nose to tail. Um, why can we keep doing this? Well, because if we were to draw it here, that would be the sum of those two vectors, and then we would add that one on, and that would be a sum of those two vectors. And then finally, um, there's friction. Now, friction is a very diverse one. It can be applied in a lot of different scenarios. If you want wind friction, of course, uh, you could. Or like air friction, sure, that's, that's definitely a possibility. More often than not, in most video games, we only apply friction when the character is on the ground. Now, I'm clearly jumping here, so I'm not going to apply friction in this case. So we're just going to kind of finish this one off here. We're going to draw a nice line from nose to tail, 
and our resulting vector is much more like this. We can see we've actually accelerated in the x direction. We're actually moving farther to the right than we originally did, but we're still down. The next update, the same forces would be applied, the downward gravity and the right directional wind. And this would continue again and again and again. It would go on forever. When does it stop? Well, it's a video game. In video games, we detect when to stop. We have to calculate, well, when should we stop applying these forces? In our case, most times, we're going to stop applying these forces when we land on the ground. When, we, when we've detected that we are currently colliding with the ground, let's say we have a platform that represents the ground, or whatever, or we're landing on some platform, then what we would do is when our character lands on this platform or intersects with this platform, they may actually even exceed that. That is possible. They land on that platform. What, what's going to happen is we're going to do two things. We're going to shift them up so they're actually lined up with the platform. And our character's still inside here. And we're going to stop applying wind and gravity. We're going to say, nope. You're not moving down, or you're not moving down because of gravity anymore. You're not moving to the right because of wind. You may still want to apply wind, and they're kind of skidding along. That is possible. It depends on the game you're building. So that's our basics for wind and gravity. Friction is a very special force. Friction is almost magical, to be honest. Um, friction is one of those forces that only applies, and when we're talking about ground friction, that is, when you're moving. So if I'm at a standstill, friction doesn't do anything to me. It's not like it's going to push me backwards or anything like that. It just keeps me where I am. Well, the way friction works is it's an opposing force. So if I am on the ground, that's a terrible rectangle, but whatever. Um, if I am on the ground and my character is drawn on this rectangle, doo -doo 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 -doo, and they're currently moving right, that means that friction has an opposing force that moves left. Now, if my my forward force is greater than the opposing friction force, I will continue to move right. If my force is less than the friction force, then I won't. I'll either stop or I'll get pushed to the left, depending on what's going to happen. So that this is where you would see things like on a hill and stuff like that, where the where the force is going to push you backwards. Um, so again, it's still the same vector addition. I have Oops, let me just change my color there, back up a little bit. Let's say I have my original force. My original force is moving to the right at this speed. And I'm going to move to the left at a speed like this. So the resulting force is actually a force that just goes like that. It's a much, much more reduced original force. But it is still going. You notice that friction is only moving in the horizontal plane, x and y. With just as gravity only moves in the vertical plane. Sorry, just sorry, gr friction only moves in the x, and gravity only moves in the y. Uh, whereas wind, wind typically can move in both. That's up to you how you want to apply to it. Um, that's your choice. So that's the basics of forces that we're going to see in our games, and I'm going to apply these to the languages that you're dealing with in the class that you're taking with me, um, and you're going to see some examples. So just to give you a quick little demo, let's just see how something like this works. You're going to see these demos in uh, other lessons, but just to, so you can see. So just to see some acceleration with um, uh, friction applied, if I move to the right, my character doesn't animate, sorry. But if I move to the right, you can see him slowly building up speed. Move to the left, he slowly takes down speed. Now remember, what you're seeing on the screen is a, is a video that's recorded at 10 frames per second. So it probably looks pretty jittery to you. Uh, but in reality, it's actually very, very smooth. And then we're going to see something more akin to this. Let me just wrote this, put this up. And this is one that applies gravity. You're going to see this one in our platform collision demo later on. Let me just move my character here. And I'm going to jump up. Do, do, do. Now I'm just going to walk off. And you're going to see gravity is going to be instantaneously applied without me doing anything. Just pulls them down. The basic truth is gravity is always applied. If you're not currently intersecting with ground, then gravity is applied. Boom. 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 Uh, and to demonstrate wind, I'm going to show you a demo that we're going to use when we talk about projectile motion. So in this one, you can see I can play with a whole bunch of different things. I'm going to uh, oops, I gotta click on the thing here. I'm going to keep the angle at 70 degrees. I'm going to boost the speed up. 
to let's say 400 pixels per second. Actually, no, let's go down to 350. And then I'm gonna really crank the wind left. So it's going pretty fast. That should not be degrees, that should be speed. That's a typo. Um, and we're gonna leave gravity the way it is. So if I hit the space key, you can see the wind is actually pulling it backwards. Boom, I have it colliding off the walls right now. But that's okay. So that is your demonstration of the three main forces that we're gonna work with. And then we're gonna see how to apply them and actually how to do them in our uh, upcoming videos.